Hey everybody, it's Barbara. And what do we have here? We have the Inspiring Women series uh, from Barbie, from Mattel. Uh, these are the latest in their long-standing collection. We have Florence Nightingale, Ella Fitzgerald, and Billie Jean King. And I'm going to do all of these dolls separately, but I wanted to shoot one opening uh, with all three, just to say that they were put out together at relatively the same time. They tend to do these in threes. Um, so we are going to start. Uh, we're going to try to do this in chronological order, so to speak. Uh, and Florence Nightingale was doing her work just about a hundred years uh, before Ella Fitzgerald hit her heyday. And then less than a half century later, uh, Billie Jean King made her mark in the sports world. So we are going to look at all three of these lovely ladies. We're going to talk about them historically, and we're probably going to talk about the shitty job Mattel did in terms of giving them their wardrobe. So everybody hang in there and uh, let's, let's enjoy the ladies. So as I said, um, the first and last paragraphs on the back of the Inspiring Woman doll series are the same. So I'm not going to read them, but I will just tell you that Billie Jean King is a tennis icon and equality champion. She was born in 1943 when Ella Fitzgerald was really cooking as a singer. And she is still with us now. Um, she She's actually been on TV a little bit more lately. Uh, just talking, she is now considered, besides being a tennis icon, she's also like a senior administrator almost. So when they're making decisions about playing tennis during the worldwide pandemic, uh, she's one of the people who's helping the World Tennis Association make a decision about how to play tournaments. Um, Billie Jean King uh, very famously played against Bobby Riggs in what was called the Battle of the Sexes. And she was trying to prove that women tennis players could play just as hard, just as well as men, and if not better. And, you know, Bobby Riggs was very much a guy's guy, a man's man when he played. Now, even though he's basically become known as the other half of the Battle of the Sexes tennis match, he was a very, very good player in his own right. And Billie Jean King picked well when she challenged him because in doing that, she really did say, make a statement that women and men can play together and play well. She's a native Californian, uh, born in Long Beach. Billie Jean King grew up playing tennis and sharpening her skills at local public parks. It's important to say that um, while she was growing up, tennis was not really a sport everybody played. It was more, it was considered very much a Caucasian sport, very much an upper middle class wealthy sport. And during this era, Billie Jean King and author Ash both in their own distinct ways, brought tennis to everyone and made it a sport that everyone played and that everyone played in public schools. In 1961, she won her first major championship title, followed by a sp series of spectacular victories over her legendary career. Off the court, Billie Jean King tirelessly championed equality in sports. You never had a problem with guys getting funded. Guys wanted a tennis team, they got it. Obviously, they had a football team. Obviously, they had a baseball team. Girls wanted to play tennis. Girls wanted to run track. Girls wanted to do something other than cheerleading. It was a lot harder for them to get money, and it was a lot harder for the schools to justify that money in their budgets. Um, Title IX changed all that. It made it very possible uh, through high school and college for women to be athletes and that their programs got the same money that the male programs got. So this is the Battle of the Sex match. In 1973, during a globally televised match, hailed as the Battle of the Sexes, millions of viewers watched as Billie Jean King defeated a formidable male rival, said Bobby Riggs, and provided a woman's place was hers to decide. 
Billie Jean King's game-changing strides for equality and social justice earned her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And here she is now. Um, in my previous two videos, you will notice um, I did not use the Barbie stand because it could not stabilize the doll very well. I don't know why it's different with B Billie Jean, but the stand is working very well with her. Um, you also you also have to understand that in this period, when it came to a product placement, it didn't exist. Um, so, so no, she's not going to be wearing something that says Nike or Reebok. Um, but this is a pretty typical outfit. Uh, the women wore um, either um, a long top and a skirt, or in her case, she wore shorts. I think she was one of the first to do that on a regular basis. And she is wearing shorts here, as you can see. Uh, well, it's supposed to be shorts, but it, it's sewn all together. So this is so the playability factor just went down because this is all one piece. So you can't put this on like a pair of jeans or something. So that kind of disappoints me that that playability factor is gone. And now I'm getting really concerned because I have no idea how the hell this. Oh, there it comes. OK, so this is going to come off with Velcro in the front. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Is this? No, I'm sorry. I was wrong. OK, this comes off in the front and her shorts do come off. OK, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. The shorts are a separate piece. I'm sorry, guys. It was just the way I was holding it. The shorts are a separate piece. You can you can actually layer this differently if you wish to. Um, so yeah, this is not a made to move body. You would think that they would put her on one because she has to be very athletic. And even though you can pose her in certain like a certain like a running, you can pose her in like a running stride, like she's running to get the ball. Like so, you can pose her like this, like she's running to get. A serve. Um, it's not a full made to move body, so that's kind of disappointing too. Um, she does come with, interestingly enough, probably one of the nicest made rackets I've seen in a while. Um, very hard to get like a decent tennis racket in 1 6 scale. Yes, this is plastic, even this is plastic, um, but it's made. I can't tell if they're making it look like wood just because. It's brown. Uh, when she played, Billie Jean King was playing in the era where professional tennis players and, and even, you know, amateurs were switching from playing wooden rackets uh, to metal based rackets. It does come with a grip so you can put this on her hand. And she will hold the racket very nicely. And of course, yes, that does come with a tennis ball. Again, no product. Uh, interestingly, when I keep saying no product placement, no product placement on the ball. But this does say Wilson, which was a major maker of rackets and still may be. I'm not a huge tennis fan, so I don't know. Uh, another cute detail, they give her a sweatband on her arm, which is removable, as you can see. I'm not going to do that. She's wearing sneakers. Again, um... They are split in the back for easy removal. They are plastic, not real laces. And she wore glasses. So, And when she was playing, they would tend to look more like a shield and be unbreakable because, duh, you didn't want to get hit with a ball and break. Um, her hair has a lot less product in it uh, than the others did. Uh, her hair was about shoulder length, and it did pretty much look like this. So they did a pretty good job modeling her hair. It still looks this way, by the way. She pretty much wears her hair the same way now. Um, so, and it's a very good likeness of her in terms of her sculpt. So in, in this line, they did a very good job. Mattel, of course, I'm talking about, did a very good job getting sculpts that would look very, you know, close. To, I mean, it's not a dedicated skull, but you could tell who it's supposed to be. Um, I like it. I like her a lot. It's a very nice doll. Um, and in terms of somebody to talk to your, you know, talk to your children about, I think it's important to talk to them about Title IX 
and talking about equality in sports because my generation, and I was born in 1976, my generation was really the first generation that grew up having that equality that if you were going to be on a tennis team, the schools were mandated by federal law to spend exactly the same amount of money on the boys team and the girls team, no matter who was having the better season or whatever. So because of that dedicated funding, you suddenly had this exponential growth in female athletes and a fierce competitism that we're now seeing in going into the second generation of female soccer players who dominate the World Cup. That we have people like the Williams sisters um, that I had growing up watching um, Maria Sharapova and Monica Sales play. So this is all in no small measure because of the groundwork that Billie Jean King laid in her career. So for me and for BJK, who is, by the way, now uh, the World Tennis Center in, in Flushing, Corona, New York, is named after her. So for me and for BGK, I will see you in my next review, which is not a Barbie signature series, but very depressingly, the clothes are made that way. I am, of course, talking about Best to Tea, the latest in the Silkstone collection. Oh, we are going to pour some tea, baby. I'll talk to you guys then. Bye-bye.